Hey there ladies and gents, welcome back to the vlog. My name is Drew and if things look a little bit different, that is because I am trying out a new angle and a new shot here. If you like it, leave a comment down below. If you don't like it, leave a comment down below. <laughs> Funny how that works. So, I, it's been a little bit and I haven't made a video in a while. I've been super busy as I'm sure I've, I mentioned to you guys in previous videos. I'm actually working at a software startup and we had a busy month last month. We were doing a lot of pushing to get our application out to production and I had a big hand in that and thankfully I'm happy to say now we have our application out on production and we are working through a couple of things that um, we didn't really notice on our local debug environment. So we're finding some issues on the production server which we're working through right now and I've been work. I've been coding for like the past five or six hours today, and I am just at my wit's end. And I figured it was time to take a break and kind of break away from code for a little bit and let my brain reset. I think that's a video that I should make later down the road. And what are some best practices with long coding sprints? Because there are some strategies that I've found that are pretty conducive. But that's for another video. We have to focus on today's video. I've been reading a lot of comments from you guys, and it's been really cool to see just the cropping of young computer science students and people who are in college or people who are in high school and considering computer science in college or people who are studying computer science. A pretty nice grouping of all of you guys and I'm very happy to see the engagement and how I've been able to interact with you guys who are you know, getting into the field of computer science. One comment that I've been seeing a little, fairly recently lately is, hey, I failed a class, or hey, I'm not doing so well in programming, yada, 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 should I quit? And that's a very good question, and one that I think we should dive into today. Um, first and foremost, let me say that computer science isn't by any means an easy major. If you went in thinking that programming or computer science or software engineering were going to be easy, they most certainly are not. Um, and that's okay. That's not to like get you down or to make you feel like you know you're stupid or anything like that. I'm just telling you that it takes a lot to chuck it in computer science. And even more so than that, when you're looking at the college level computer science workload, it's it gets a little bit more tricky, I guess you can say. So I think we need to talk a little bit about the concept of a weed out class. Now, a weed out, if you've never heard the term before, is essentially a class that is super duper hard, usually at the beginning of things. So if you look at your computer science four-year degree plan, usually there's a couple classes that everybody takes towards the beginning, like programming fundamentals or intro to Java or intro to programming. And sometimes, be it the desire of the department or the desire of the professor or whatever, they choose to make these classes a little bit harder than they really should be, if that makes sense. Um, so the reason for that is they want to make sure that you are ready and prepared and are willing to put in the effort for computer science and studying this complex field and you're able to keep up with things. And to that end, they add up just a little bit of extra rigor to make sure that you're committed. And it's completely legal. It's not the most desirable outcome, but there's good intention behind it. The idea being that if you get into a weed out early in your career, you say, hey, this just isn't for me, I can't keep pace, or this is just extremely hard, then you still have time to go and find another class or another major that you enjoy versus getting three years into a degree and hitting a weed out and realizing this is not what you want to do and you've wasted three years of your life. So there's good motivation behind weed out classes, I promise you, but when you sit in one and you have to deal with it, it is not the most pleasant thing in the world. I, this is where I get kind of biased and it's going to sound like I'm humble bragging, but I promise I'm not. I'm happy to say that I don't think I ever hit any weed out classes when I was going through computer science. And I don't know if that's just because computer science clicks with me in a different way than other people, or I was just really good with picking my professors and I didn't catch any professors that were really rigorous or were the kind to make a weed out class. But thankfully I've never had to really deal with a weed out class, at least on the computer science side of things. I had to retake a couple classes on like the math and physics side of things just because I was a butthead and a dingus and I shouldn't, I didn't buckle down as well as I should have, but 
realize that the fact that you fail a class or the fact that you're not doing well in a class is not necessarily indicative of you per se, it's just by design. And the way that you can usually tell is if the rest, you can kind of take pace with the rest of the class, if that makes sense. So if you have any other friends in the class and you say, hey, what'd you get on this exam? And they got close to what you got, then usually that's a weed out. Weed outs, you usually see the average grade for an exam being around like a 60 or 70. There's maybe one or two A's for these kids who just like study and do nothing else. But if the average for a class is right around the 60 or 70 cusp, or it may be even a little bit lower than that, it's generally a weed out because the average for a test should be around 70 to 85, just by pure statistical average or the law of statistics on a 100 point scale exam curve. Um, so that's a good sign that it's a weed out. Um, another good indi indication of a weed out is if your professor says, well, if this is too rigorous for you, you may want to consider changing majors. That's them explicitly telling you, it's like, hey, if you can't catch this or you can't do well in this, you're not going to survive later down the road. Again, there's some truth to that. There's sometimes not. Um, they're really trying to weed out the kids who aren't going to work hard. But if you've made a commitment to be in computer science, then usually you can make it happen and power through it. So those words are the, hey, if you can't shake it here, you're only going to fail, are just to push the people that are already considering leaving over the edge because they're not committed. So like I said, if you are worried about failing a class or you have failed a class, first look at, is it a weed out course? Like try and understand, is this really a weed out class? Like did everybody else do really horrible and I just happened to miss the cusp? Or am I genuinely having difficulty understanding the concepts here? If it's a weed out class, then maybe you consider taking another professor next semester, or maybe you consider putting in some extra hours for tutoring and stuff like that. But as long as you can pass through those weed out classes and you kind of still have passion for it after it. So if you, if you have the passion enough to get through the weed out class and put in the effort, then you're more than likely gonna do well in your later classes. Now, the other side of the coin is if you're not in a weed out class, you have to really, really be honest with yourself for a little bit and understand that if you're in a junior or a senior level computer science course, and by that point you're still struggling, like you struggled, but you happen to make your way through the junior classes and now junior and senior level courses are just hitting you really hard in the gut, then that's where you really have to do some soul searching and say, okay, is this really for me? And again, I can't make that decision for you, but I can give you some ideas as to the questions you should be asking yourself when it comes to doing this kind of soul searching. First and foremost, ask yourself, who are you doing this for? If you are studying computer science because you enjoy computer science and all your life you grew up and you enjoyed programming, you enjoyed playing with computers and you can't see yourself doing anything else, then power through. By all means, you can find the motivation within yourself to continue if that's your reason for starting. But, and this is where it gets really hairy, if you are doing this program for somebody else's expectations, be it your parents or your boss or somebody, if somebody else is pushing you to do this program, then chances are very slim, and just being honest with you, chances are very slim that you'll have the or you'll be able to find the motivation within yourself to continue working on it because you yourself are not making the choice. You're very much making the choice for somebody else or somebody else has told you that you must do this. So your motivation is only as strong as how much you want to please that person. And that's not a bad thing. Again, we, we as human beings, we want to avoid conflict and we don't want to disappoint people, but there comes a time in your life where you have to start making decisions for yourself. And if all your life you've been told that you're gonna do this, you're gonna do this, you're gonna do this, then you're breeding in your mind a notion of subservience or that you always have to be told what to do or else you can't do it. And you wanna be able to think for yourself and you wanna be able to make decisions on your own and you wanna be able to choose your own career because for the next 30 to 40 years of your life, you're gonna, be have, to, you're gonna have to be doing the thing that you chose to do. If you don't enjoy what you're doing or you had somebody else choose for you, then it's going to be a long 40 years and you're going to get burned out. You're going to be disappointed. It's going to turn into low self-esteem. And I realize that I sound kind of down in the dumps, but I just want to get to you early and say, hey, if you turn this around now, you'll save yourself a lot of pain down the road. 
And who knows, it could be completely different from my expectations. It could be that, you know, maybe you are doing this for somebody else, but and later in these classes, you find that you really enjoy it. And so it was your decision all along to make. But there's a very high correlation between self-motivation and self-choice. So if you yourself are choosing to do this career path, then you will find the self-motivation to get to the point at which you can become successful. If somebody else is motivating you to do it, then you will be very hard pressed to find the motivation to do it yourself because you'll have to have somebody else constantly nagging on you and constantly weighing on you in order to get you there. And nobody likes that. Nobody likes an anchor strapped to their ankle. They like being free and you wanna be able to, like I said, make your own choices. So if you are not doing well in a class and you maybe you failed a class or you need to retake or something like that, really do some soul searching and ask yourself if you're doing this for you or you're doing this for somebody else. This is again, this, this is assuming it's not a weed out because we've already talked about weed outs. Um, but if it's one of those things where you're saying, hey, I don't think this is for me, I'm not making this decision for myself, I'm you know, trying to please somebody else, then I'm proud of you. That's That takes a lot of guts and that takes a lot of gusto to be able to say that and say, hey, this is something I don't enjoy doing, and I'm very much doing this for somebody else and I want to do what I want to do. I don't want to do what they want me to do. So props to you if you can come to that that realization, I guess you can say. And it's hard sometimes. It, um, it's not easy to be vulnerable enough with yourself to, to say, hey, I've maybe have been let on in this situation or, you know, this person has been telling me what to do my whole life and finally I'm taking a stand. But from the minute that you make that decision onward, your life is going to be better. You made a choice in your life to live life according to you and not according to someone else. And you'll thank yourself for it later down the road. And there's gonna be some hard conversations, there's gonna be some hard things, but in the end, I can promise you, things will be better because you're starting to make decisions, not the other person. So, I hope that gives you guys some perspective into, hey, I failed a class, or hey, I didn't do well in this class, and what should I do? Um, Ask yourself, is this a weed out class? That's a big one. And secondly, ask yourself, um, is this really what I want to do? Or why did I get started with this? Was it for me or was it for somebody else? And if it was for yourself, then find the motivation, go to the tutoring lab, go to the CS Open Lab, talk with your friends, talk with your professor, get the resources that you need to succeed next time and you'll do far, you'll do, you'll go far. <laughs> I, I just fused you'll do well and you'll go far together. So you'll do far. Um, but I, I wanted to wrap things up on this one and kind of get on the soapbox a little and say that failure is part of life. And like I said, I failed integral calculus twice. I failed physics once and I still got my degree. And I think all of our lives we're taught that we shouldn't fail, but in reality, the people who are most successful in life are the ones who fail early and they fail often. And they don't let failure be a hard stop, but rather they let it be a vehicle for learning. So you're going to fail in your life, be it in college, be it in your job, that sort of thing. But you don't have to let failure continue to define you. Failure is an event. It's never a person. And I think that we haven't been taught to fail gracefully in our lives. All our lives, like I said, we've been taught that we must do well. And if you're a failure, then you are the failure, not necessarily that you had a moment of failure. It's actually the latter. You had a moment of failure. You yourself are not a failure. And don't ever let yourself think that. You, you're not a failure. You're not a failure. You are not a failure. You are a human being living the best life that you possibly can at this moment and doing your best. And sometimes that comes with failure every once in a while, and that is okay. So don't get down on yourself too much. Let it be a tool to motivate you, to keep you going, to help you learn something. Maybe you need to party less, or maybe you need to study more. There's always a learn in each moment of failure, and successful people find that learn. It's the people who say, woe is me, and you know, just sit there and think their lives a misery that don't go very far, and they insist on failure versus insist on success. So, stepping off my soapbox for a little bit, um, it's okay to fail. <laughs> we are not perfect. We're all human beings, and you're gonna fail at some point in your life. And if you fail in college versus failing 20 years later down the road at a big job or a big client, then 
I'd say that's a job well done. So you failed early and you learned on it. And so later down the road, you're going to be that much better. So it's okay to fail. Learn to fail, learn to push through and use your resources. That's my advice to anybody who's worried about failing a class or has failed a class in computer science. So friends, I will wrap up this video in the traditional way. And that is by me saying, always remember that you are wanted, you are loved and you are appreciated. You have a special talent that nobody else has, and the world is waiting on you to bring it out. So muster a little courage, go out into the world, and change it. That's what the world's waiting on. You.